It's been quite a while since I've made a video, or even used my voice in a video for that matter, but uh, yeah, that's that's irrelevant in this, in this case. I'm here today to give you a small video on the rather odd Welsh tank engine known as the Geskine Nettlefords Class D. Hopefully at the end you'll have a lovely surprise too, so I hope you enjoy. In 1907, a man called George Robson, who was the superintendent at Eifer Engineering Shops, was tasked to design an off-road tank for the nearby Dowlais Ironworks, who which at the time was under ownership of Guess Keen and Nettlefords Limited. The first of the class was completed in December of that year and was given the classification of the Guess Keen and Nettlefords Class D, or the GK and N Class D, or for short, the, just the D class. The class was designed with a wheelbase of 7 foot 6 inches. Its overall length was 19 feet 6 inches and height was 11 foot 1 inch. Its boiler pressure was 190 psi. Tractive effort was 13,560 pounds. Water capacity was 476 gallons and coal capacity was 17 CWTS. The first of the class was numbered 40 although it didn't carry a name. Yet. In 1909, the second of the class was built, but numbered 42. There are a few differences compared to number 40. Those being, number 42 had wooden buffer beams instead of steel. The whistle was on the opposite side of the firebox, that being the driver's side, and was a custom hooter instead of a normal bell top. Then there's the smaller cab holes next to the bigger ones, and there were no cab ventilators either. So when steaming up number 42 in the mornings, it probably got a little bit more smoky than number 40. In 1912, King George V and Queen Mary were visiting various places, including Dowlais Ironworks, which they travelled to Dowlais via the London North Western Railway by the Royal Train. This is where both number 40 and number 42 were put on display outside the ironworks, and this is where both of them were christened. Number 40 became King George V, and number 42 became Queen Mary. As quoted on both nameplates, graciously named by His Majesty in person, King George V, during his visit to Dowlais, June 27th, 1912. Similarly lettered on number 42, but in respect of Queen Mary. Four of the members of the class were constructed later on. Number 43 in 1912, number 44 in 1915, number 45 in 1917, and finally number 46 in 1920, which was the final engine to be built by Geskin and Nettlefords. But the most notable member has to be number 44. Constructed in 1915 respectively, she ended up having a rebuild in 1927, but going from an 040 to an 060, and being christened Pant after the village which isn't very far from Dowlais. One other notable thing is a member from the Pontypridd Model Railway Club who used to work on the Class Ds said this, the engine after the rebuild became the most powerful, the easiest to clean and the most used. Thank you to my friend Vice for actually getting that information, thank you ever so much. As for the withdrawal and scrapping of this class, I'm not even sure myself. I've looked almost everywhere, and there's no record on the disposal of these engines. The only thing I could find that's remotely related is the withdrawal of number 7, later on numbered 5 when it went to Cardiff Steelworks, which Cardiff Steelworks was also under ownership of Geskin and Nettlefords, might I add. She worked there for all her life until withdrawal and scrappage in the 1950s. I think 1957 is the accurate year, but I can't remember. Maybe the D's could have gone at the same time, who knows. But if anybody does have an, any information, please do let me know. Other than making this because nobody else has done anything covering this engine, there's another reason why I've made this video. You see, back in December of 2010 on Christmas Day, I was gifted a new train set by my nan, 
won't my Nanny Martin, as we all called her. It was a Hornby train set consisting of a Class D tank, but painted in the Southern Star livery, and from then onward it became one of my favourites. Not only was it my favourite, but it ended up being the starting point of me collecting model railways and involving myself in such a hobby. However, tragedy struck us all on this day in 2016 when my nan passed away due to heart disease that she wasn't even aware of. But a younger me decided to keep her spirit alive in some way. In early 2017, that was when I thought of taking up 3D modelling, as I had been inspired by Scholarly123, the man behind SI3D06. I three d I thought of attempting to recreate the model my nan bought me, so I gave it an attempt. But, uh... Okay, I was damn well proud of it at the time, given I did everything on my own with the greatest difficulty, but got there in the end. It's not accurate compared to the original model, but as of 2021, after a good 20 to 25 rebuilds and a friend going to someone who had the drawings of this class, thanks a lot, Becca, I still appreciate you for that, the model looks so much better, and I can definitely say I've improved. Now for the lovely surprise that I mentioned at the beginning, and I hope you guys very much enjoy what I've created. Thanks to everyone involved that has helped me to create something that's been on the back burner for way too long. This isn't just for your enjoyment, this is my way of tributing my nan, as she started something that I had rather rough beginnings, but ended up becoming something that's changed my life forever. Thank you everyone, thank you ever so much. Thank you.